Uh, so you can listen to her brain as she will be creating a piece of visual art. And so they send, they sub, they send up, uh, in, um, they need to check the, um, the location of the sensors, uh, the connection between the sensor and, and her scalp, um, the physical connection so that we can measure the electrical signals that are ready for her brain. These are very tiny, the 10 to the minus 6 is microvolts, really, really tiny signals. Um, and so, they're using a computer program to, to check each channel. And that requires a little bit of, a little bit of art because they need to, to move the electrons around, particularly because he, she has long hair, and thick hair. So we need to make sure that this good contact. So let me tell you about the project when they are done. So this has started two years ago, Helena. Yes. Uh, she, she had, um, she, she invited me to, to be a panelist at the uh, Art Science uh, panel here, uh, actually next door at the auditorium of the history room, uh, about creativity, art, and science, and we connected and I invited her to come to a meeting that I was organizing in Cancun about creativity. And with the help of some students that, that were attending the, the conference, uh, we put together something like what you will see here today. It's uh, the initial steps. And um, we were very excited about the potential. We will talk about that at, at the end. Um, and so we have been working you know, a group of students, Haralina and myself. We also have um, a colleague, a music composer, Amos Konkaran, uh, who was an uh, Emmy nominated uh, music composer, who has uh, developed a, you know, a grammar of sounds. Um, because we, we uh, also uh, are interested in listening to the brain. So today you will see how the brain uh, uh, interprets creativity through a AI model, through an artificial intelligence model, and at the same time you are listening to her brain as she performs in front of you, right? So, so we are really here studying uh, the creative process, and, and this is a long process um, because creativity takes years and changes. So we, every time that we have a performance, we collect data so that we can fit the data to the AI model to learn more and more about the creative process from her business brain. And so this is very unique. It's, it's, it's a performance, yes. Um, it's a study, yes. So we are merging here our science and, and learning a, a little bit more about how her business uh, uh, creates, a, you know, in this case, a visual piece. Uh, last time we did this was at the Moody Center for the Performing Arts. Uh, we went to the same, we, first time there, so we had to, to learn about the AV systems and working with the uh, technical staff to, to make, make it happen. And um, we're making progress. Um, and I hope you like it. We, uh, you will see in a few minutes uh, this performance that will last 15 minutes. Um, and after that, we can entertain questions. So, for this is the first time for many of the students here, so that's, that's great too. To start with part of the training. And yeah, we are very happy about that because this is uh, the second time after you know, COVID, you know, after being uh, uh, in the virtual world. <laughs> for 14 months. Right? Um, now, the other interesting piece of story here is that um, I told you about the uh, Amos uh, Cochran, who is a, a music, music composer, who is part of the design of the grammar of sounds. Well, we, we met him through the Jewish public art uh, color fair. So we, we had a collaboration with them uh, early in the semester. And, and so, since, since we learned a lot about his work, um, I invited him to, to, um, 
Today I guess I speak in one of my classes on, on the immune humanities. So trying to, uh, to link the neuroscience with, with the humanities, in this case art, but also we can think about ethics and philosophy and other aspects of humanities. And, and so for Emos was a, a really um, interesting the concept of a brain computer interface, right? So a, a, a system that, that captures your brain activity in real time, right? Sends that to a computer for processing and does something with it. Right? So in my lab, we, we focus on brain computer interfaces to control machines like robots so that we can help people with disabilities to walk again or to use their arms and hands, people with amputations, right, to control the prosthetic arm with, by thinking about it. Right? And in this case, we are expanding on that in two ways. One is, certainly this is not a robot, this is an aesthetic experience, right? So, so when I use this very computer interface to this AI model to visualize what her brain is thinking as she performs. So you would kind of see a, a, a physical painting on the canvas, at the same time that you will see a different painting that is coming from this AI model that captures the brain activity and the temporary process, right? And also, um, you know, listen to that, to this level of sound. But the only important aspect is that um, a brain activity not only controls movement to diagnose places, right, to, to, to work, to do things, but also we communicate through the movement, right? So we can recognize other people's actions by the way they move, their gestures, right? And we can recognize our partner by the way they walk, because we have a representation in the brain about that person, right? How she moves, um, 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 how she thinks, how she will respond to something. We, we, you know, with time, we learn that. And, and so this is also about communication. It is the, the expressive movement of Haradina as she works on painting a stroke, right? Putting a dash of horror, you know, deciding about the location on, on the canvas to, to make a, a texture, right? So to think about movement, things, think about um, expressive movement, communication, and, and just imagine how the brain is able to put this together you know, in real time, right, based on the context. So, so this is, is what all this experiment and performance is about, is understanding that process. So this, this AI model is based on her prior work, so we have trained this model based on her prior uh, our, our work, but also her brain activity. So it's gonna change from day to day because she's evolving as an artist too. So the very process is a very dynamic process. Um, and so it's why we think using this technology, uh, which is known as scalp electroencephalography or EEG, uh, we can follow these dynamics. Right? Uh, some other groups are doing the similar type of experiments using fMRI, functional magnetic resonance imaging. But, but that doesn't give you the time, it doesn't give you the dynamics. It's just a, a picture that you take of the brain at a particular time. Here we are able to follow that, uh, not only today, but from session to session, from performance to performance. So that's, that's really important for us. Um, it, this was substance, you know, too heavy connection. But in this case, we're using the uh, another type of technology where, where these sensors are dry, so it's, it's like a spider, uh, spider legs that, that go through the hair and make contact with your scalp. So we have sensors on the back of the head that listen to visual cortex, so area related to vision processing. And then in the front, we have pre prefrontal cortex where decision making happens. And then on the middle, we have all sensory motor areas that code for sensory information coming from the arm, the body, and also output to control uh, the body. And then in between the midline and the back, we have uh, a posterior part of, of cerebral cortex 
where only planning happens, right? So and, and, and she prepares to to grab a tool and use that tool to uh, to draw a stroke. That part of the brain is, is planning that movement, and then the middle areas of the brain release that for execution. Now, something very interesting, you know, when she decides to um, to make a particular movement, right? With a tool or without a tool, right? That is the outcome of you know a decision-making process because she could do many, many, many things, many, many different types of movement, right? But she chose to 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 select that particular one. Now, that means that when you see the canvas, is it the the output of the decision-making process implemented through the sensory motor system. But what you're gonna see on the display, on the theater painting, is the whole thing. So you can see not only what was being decided, but because we are recording in real time, you're gonna uh, also get information about those, those, um, uh, you know, those possibilities that were going to make it. So we are able to, to see the invisible in a way. So, so you, you capture the whole, the whole process. Um, it's like what you see is the tip of an iceberg, and supporting that tip is, is the foundation of what comes out, and so with the EEG we can measure the whole thing. So that's another neat aspect of the technology. So we have, okay, we have one sensor that is behaving badly today. Um, I'm going to put uh, her brain activity on the, on the screen, um, so to explain a little bit, and also to ask her to do some basic tasks to check that everything is working before we start the task, okay? So you will see um, some, some waveforms. Each waveform represents one sensor on her brain. Can you close your eyes and rest, Haraldina? So from the top to bottom, you know, each, each row is, is one sensor. And time goes to the right. Um, can you open your eyes? Rest. Could you blink three times? Blink. So you can see the, the change. So when she blinks, there are generators behind her eyes that generate electrical activity, and that you know uh, travels to the brain is captured by the sensors. So, um, so blink three, three times, Carol. Right. Clench your teeth. Okay. No rest. Close your eyes. So this this uh, changes this oscillation that you see. Then I use by the program to uh, through analysis to make interpretation about what's going on inside her brain, and then through the AI model transform that into the data paint. So I think we are fine. So uh, we can we can start. <coughs> 